Hi everybody and welcome to Soul Camp 14. Great to be with you. It is great to be with you. We love doing these sessions as we've said so many times, but we say it because we do. And we trust that you're getting something out of every uh, session that we're doing and that they, they're adding together in your understanding and hopefully application of this mm. truth. You know, we're, we're all on a journey and it's a process. It, we don't get there overnight. And that's why we have grace. God's mercies are new every morning, as I said uh, last Sunday uh, in, our, in the message. And they are. They're, they're new every morning. It's compassion. Amen. It never fails. They fail not, as the song says. So we're glad to be with you. We have some great information again to pass on to you. We continue to miss you. We're thankful that uh, things have changed slightly. We're closer today to getting back together in a physical sense uh, um, than we were even the last broadcast on Friday. So, you know, small things, but we're, 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 uh, we're encouraged, aren't we? So stay well and uh, stay blessed and open up your hearts to receive now. Deb's going to read some scripture. Okay. I'm going to read um, from James chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. And it says this, But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. So uh, we have a new chart today that we're going to show you. Yeah. Just to say, we've read that scripture and to be a part of this session because of what we dealt with last Friday. And, um, and just to try and really, really, really enforce and emphasize that so much of the word death in scripture means the condition that you're living in, not the act of passing from this, yeah. this life. So we have to understand that, that giving birth to death means giving birth to a condition mm. that can control your life ultimately or that can certainly affect your life. So anyway, back over to Deb. Yeah, just to back that up, mm. if you remember when we went back to the beginning, that might have been last week, I can't yeah. remember, when we talked about Adam and when God said, um, if you eat from that tree, you will die, he didn't mean die because you live for 900 years. 900 yeah. odd years after yeah. that so that's the point that john's making there mm. that death in this scripture doesn't yeah. mean dead um end of life it means living in that, living in that condition it does yeah okay so okay. our great friend dale jones from birmingham made this chart for us um i know it's not very big so i hope you can kind of see it all right um the writing sorry but i just had to do that because of what we're trying to achieve so when I when I Dale showed me that he'd made this chart and so I asked him if I could if he would make us one and he did very kindly and he, and he sent it through and when when you look at it I feel like this is a chart where this is what we want to kind of get to so this this part was very easy for me to fill in because it's our spirit this middle circle this inner man is our spirit man and and remember right we're back at the beginning scripture that says we have everything we need for life and godliness and it's in this part of us what we want to get to is these lines all being level and connected to each other so that everything that's in our spirit has got no blockage to flow out through our soul and into our body of course this bit here being the soul the middle bit and the end bit the outer bit being our body so we want to get to a place where we have no blockages in our soul. That's kind of the end game. It's where we want to get to. Our problem is when we get this brand new spirit, as we're told about in 2 Corinthians 5.17, is the stuff that we have in our, in our soul that can be a blockage. So for example, in your spirit, you have forgiveness, which means you can forgive anybody, anything. Mm -hmm. Not that it's easy, but you have got that power within you to yeah. do that. What, what the problem is, if you're, not, if you're off kilter with this thing and you've got unforgiveness here in your soul, like your Bobs or your Ethels, mm. who we've come to know and love over these last few weeks, mm -hmm. then you're gonna, you've got a blockage here where forgiveness can't flow. And then you have the potential where you've birthed death, like that scripture just talks about, 
which could create sickness in your body. Now mm -hmm. you'll know that the scientific evidence that can prove that bitterness and unforgiveness and things like that can cause physical ailment. So that's our, that's kind of a chart where we're going to work towards uh -huh. as to where the end result we want to be, where stuff can just flow out freely with no blockage, Amen. no bobs or ethels. Amen. I want you to um, open your Bibles, please, and turn to James 5. And I want to continue from where we were Friday. And the first thing I want to say is that we recognize this is very deep stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, I did say that on Friday because it is. But we can't alter Scripture. No. We embrace Scripture. Even the parts that we think, wow, that's hard. And, and this is such, but it comes uh, with mm -hmm. amazing blessing and um we it, it's t it's the end of the book of james and i'm gonna actually i'm gonna ask you to read if you would uh, oh, okay. from verse 15 in in five yes 13 sorry go from verse 13 is any among you suffering mm -hmm. let him pray is anyone cheerful let him sing praise is anyone among you sick let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick and yes. the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Carry on. Yeah, please, yeah. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. And the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain mm -hmm. on the earth. God, three and a half months, a uh, year, so yeah. I've noticed that before. No, no. Then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. Yeah. yeah, is that enough? That's enough, yeah. Um, <clears throat> actually, no, read on, read on till the end of it. My brothers, if any among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, mm -hmm. let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Amen. That word death appears there. Yeah. And I want, I want us to take this in context of uh, what James is saying. He's trying to help people, obviously, his hearers. He's trying to help them. And, and I guess what he's trying to say in this is, is that if we have birthed death, then it has to be redeemed uh, before yeah. there's an effectiveness of someone praying for us. If you, if you get that, I'm thinking words as I'm speaking here. But uh, on, on our chart there, it, it's not, it, we, we see the inner man, and Debbie's pointed that out, that we've got all these things in our in, in, inner man, in our spirit man, mm -hmm. but then there's this soul that's been affected by lots of other stuff, which in turn affects our sense, knowledge, and our thinking, and our behavior, of course. Now, it's not by chance that uh, in this, James speaks about Elijah. And, and he, he, he says in the NIV that the, pr uh, the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Mm -hmm. Elijah was a human being or, or a man just like us, mm -hmm. yet he prayed. That's how powerful that spirit <laughs> within you is. When it flowed through Elijah, it stopped the rain for three and a half years. <laughs> and, and James goes to pains to tell us he was like us. It's an encouragement of what we can achieve yeah. through the spirit within us. So, so James says prior to that, if you're sick, meaning if you're sick and it won't go, it could be that you have birthed something that is a blockage uh, into receiving what what uh, what God wants to do for you in terms of healing you. We, um, we as we said on Friday, we've hardly looked at this scripture because we we associate with shame if we have to talk somebody don't we particularly uh sins of say of a sexual nature or sins of uh something that we're not proud of in our lives mm -hmm. you know the secret to our lives but this can be 
in the way of being healed. And we tie that in with 1 Corinthians, with, with, the, with the communion scriptures, where the Apostle Paul says to the Christians in Corinth, believers, this is why many of you are weak, many are sick, and many have died prematurely. That's what he's getting at. And, and he's saying it's possible there's a reason why we can't shift this sickness, to put it in colloquial terms. So in James here, he's saying, call the elders, get them to anoint you, but, but confess your sins one to another, then you'll be healed. And he's talking about redemption, so, redeeming, sorry, redeeming the past, redeeming uh, uh, what we have birthed in our life, that we have created, if you like, through sin, mm. through our wrong behavior, the condition of death somehow in our souls that that can can actually take our lives early if we don't deal with it it's that stark and it, and it's uh, it's a reality what we're looking at. as i said it's very deep and it's not ooh hallelujah yippee stuff but it is once we've embraced it it yeah. is yippee hallelujah because it starts to give us hope where we've been prayed for people have laid hands on us and there's been no change Sometimes we have to be counseled before we get prayed for. That's what we're saying. We are absolutely, and you would know, all four people coming to the front, we lay our hands on them and we, we, we trust God for a miracle, aren't we? Absolutely. We do that any time for anybody. But we've been on the road too long to know that that in itself is, is, is not often enough. I just do that. There's the reasons why we're not getting answers to prayer, and here is one of them. It's scripture. Do you want to come in and add to that? Only, only to say that it's it's, mm. it's great talking about this um, in a sense of a, a preventive of giving information mm. to people who um, we know a lot of you who are watching, but we don't know everyone that's watching. No, true. It's much more difficult to broach this subject to a person who, who's in a sick situation. That's when it becomes more of a challenge to bring up the yeah. subject. Mm. But if we can get messages like this out before Absolutely. a person hits that storm, it's much easier to, to, for it to be a discussion. But you're hardly going to get to some, although you have done it actually on, on one occasion at least comes to mind where you have, mm. somebody was facing a death issue and you talked to them seriously about some yeah, stuff. So did, yeah. you have done it, but it's far easier for this to be a pre a preventive isn't it yeah. rather than yeah. trying to talk to somebody during their storm hey have you thought about yeah. you know you might have yeah. contributed to this yeah we, we, i've told a story since i've been here in oh, who knows when might have been in a soul camp <laughs> but i had i had a friend in wales who is somebody i led to the lord and mm. baptized him and they moved churches uh, to their locality where they lived after a while and we stayed good friends and he took seriously ill with cancer. And I went to see him and I knew in my heart I had to counsel him because it was, he was going to have a very serious operation that um, the chances are he wouldn't come through. He wouldn't survive. And I knew I had to breach things with him because I knew he'd been badly hurt in his workplace. Of, he worked at the same place as his wife worked and and i know his wife had been very uh, mistreated mm. by management and that my friend had taken this or, as you would is a he was a really great guy but I, I knew potentially this could have caused unforgiveness in his heart and could have you know been something he was holding on to there could have been other things so i was there um, talking with him, you know, being a friend to him, being, uh, I was no longer his, his hands-on pastor, but I was his pastor in a sense. And uh, I said, I said his name and then I said, I need to be honest with you. I need to ask you to position yourself to get the best, best chance, chance possible out of this. So he said, what, what do you mean? And I said, I want to ask you to when I've gone to get before God, you know, you don't have to do anything with me. If you want to, you can. But I want you to make sure there's nothing between you and God in sin in your life. I want you to repent of it, confess it. And I want you to search your heart if you've got unforgiveness there. If people who've hurt you are, are still, if you're carrying them in your heart, you've got to forgive them in order to give yourself 
the best chance possible to position yourself you see it's about positioning to receive I can't stress that enough you have to at times position yourself and, and that is more you can come in in a moment mm. that is more than just bringing yourself out to the front sometimes you've got to sort your heart out first you know i'm talking about coming out to the front when there's an altar call for prayer so he went in had this serious operation he was in a ward of six people and he was coming round you know as you do when the consultant's doing his rounds etc and he heard a whisper uh, this one hasn't when they were by his bed this one hasn't got much chance of surviving and in his spirit, man, he said, I'm not receiving that. I am not receiving it. I, I'm going to fight this and da, da, da. And he forced himself uh, some time after to get up, you know, when he could. And, and not just to lie back and accept his condition. To cut a long story short, and Deb's going to come in. Out of the six people in that ward, he was the only yeah. one who walked out of there. He, he, this is a good few years ago. Mm -hmm. He has lived healthy and serve God ever since. You see, <laughs> it's truth in love that's needed. Truth in itself can be hurtful, but truth in love is what Scripture says. We grow up in all things by speaking truth in love. And, and it behoves us to speak on passages of Scripture like this in order to help you, to help ourselves. Mm -hmm. Come in, babe. Just a great analogy yeah. there, as John mm. was speaking about positioning yourself. Yeah. And it's if you want, it's like you've got the chance to score a penalty in a football match. Yeah. And <clears throat> if I take the ball and go off the pitch and into another field, but my goal has to go into that net, I have zero chance of scoring that penalty. If I get the positioning right of a goal and I'm standing in front of the goal. I still might miss, but I'm giving myself the best possible chance to score mm. that goal. Mm. So the information that we are putting out with Soul Camp, mm. we can't 100% guarantee that, that you're going to get healed. We haven't got that kind of power. But what we hope we are doing is giving, like John's exact, what John has exactly just said, is we're giving all of ourselves the perfect chance, the best possible chance we have of scoring that penalty and getting well. If we're in a totally different field and we're not looking at the issues of the soul, mm. we've got zero chance as far as we're concerned because the blockages and the yeah. death are all getting in the way. So yeah. this information is getting the ball in front of the net at least yeah. to give us the best chance Absolutely. of freedom and, and healing. It, it's a case of hearing God as well for the one who ministers. <coughs> Jesus yes. spat in people's eyes. He didn't do it every time, did he? But he did it. Can he did do it. I know. I can't imagine. <laughs> but he did do it. He, he told people to dip at times. He, 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 mm. he asked people to do something because he only did what the Father told him yeah. to do. Now, <coughs> we're not saying to you, run around looking for somebody to confess your sins to. That's not what we're saying. You know, you need to trust the person. If it comes to that, if it comes to that, if, 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 if you feel I need to get something off my chest, so to speak, by confessing it and I need another person to hear that, mm. then you have to pick and choose. You know, you have to talk to your pastors or you talk to a trusted friend who will not judge you. You know, we can assure you, we will not judge you. We've enough in our past mm. not to judge people. I've said Absolutely. that to you because I want to disarm you from thinking oh I could never share that yes you could share it and yes you should share it if it's something you're still carrying around with you mm -hmm. the work the washing of the soul and the restoration of the soul uh, will lead into the miraculous Amen. let me remind you again how James links the effectiveness of prayer to this scripture and what he's saying really is prayer can be ineffective as well it can be ineffective until it removes the blockage or until uh, what we call in the condition of death is removed from 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 our lives yeah. so that we can receive what God has for us and and God God is, is saying through James there it's extreme the prayer uh, of a righteous man is powerful and effective yeah. but but let's be clear about mm. this it, it it could be powerful and effective and have no effect on your life if there's a big blockage in your life. 
even if yeah. Jesus himself prayed for you that blockage could stop you receiving that's what I'm trying to say mm. to you so we're growing in this stuff yeah. guys it's going to be our culture it's not a run around and oh I'm panicking now not at all you know you can privately talk to us about these things but it will become part of our culture where it becomes normal and let me assure you the end result of living at this level <clears throat> is you you don't carry shame because you you realize full well we all carry it to a degree yeah. we've all done things that we would not like people to know mm -hmm. but it's the reason one of the reasons why james says confess your sins to one another because it removes pride yeah it puts us on a level playing field that we all need a savior none of us can make it without grace and that the power of god as it as it comes upon us uh, will not bypass a deep blockage until that blockage is That's dismissed. Right. Of course God can. I'm talking about the usual pattern of things here. God can do what he wants. He, he's sovereign. But, but he's given us scripture as a guidance for how things usually work. His order, in other words, yeah, of how it works. Things in a certain way, didn't he, absolutely. So that we can approach things with confidence to get results. Amen. It's not just uh, ad hoc. It's confident that we can do something. Yeah. We, and at the level, this is final thing. We're going to finish here for time's sake. We want to do things at a level that we cannot do naturally. We want to do things at a level where we have confidence to get people healed, even if they've got the worst kind of sickness, the worst kind of illness. Yes, Lord. Not, not just things of everyday life. We want to be confident as a body of people at the Newcastle Elim Church that we can confidently approach things with results in mind that are very positive amen amen god bless you god bless you we're coming back into your home on friday we yep. trust that uh, you'll even play this again and listen to the scriptures and look in james ask and questions ask questions and where necessary be bold enough to find that trusted friend and uh, if you feel you really need to yeah then confess your sins one to another it's it's healing in itself it's life-giving in itself okay see you next time see you next time bye. god bless you bye bye